Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Big Gal Shows, the stock investing show. It's completely out of pocket to help with money in your pocket. I'm Austin back with the boys. What's up, Big Gal Shows? It's your boy, Big Gal Show Tyler. We are back. Hey, Dave's here. Just got back from Guadalajara. Um, we got some insane stories to tell you guys. But first, make sure if you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Big Gauchos. Um, if you like our content, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving us some comments, some nice comments, or some mean comments, whatever you prefer. And let's get started. Yep, mean comments get us exposure either way. But uh, I guess we should get to the outlandish clickbait that's in the title. Uh, Cole Smead, a popular hedge fund manager, said that uh, millennials are causing the overinflated stock market and that they're going to live to regret every decision they've ever made. Well, I mean, he didn't really say it that dramatically, but you get the idea. Yeah, he called them young, dumb investors, and they're buying into an inflated stock market, which is probably true, I'll be honest. You know, Very most true. companies are um, valued at a lot more than what they are earning. Um, the example he gave was Microsoft, which has a PE ratio of over 40, and he said they are very unlikely to earn a um, amount. They're, they're very unlikely to earn enough money through that stock in 10 years to support their needs. Yeah, my, my grandpa gave me advice like that once. He was like, yeah, if the, if the P to E ratio is over 40, you're kind of screwed. So I guess, I guess this guy's got some, uh, some old time wisdom. That's for sure. But uh, the first, the like biggest example that comes to mind for me is Tesla because it's like thirteen hundred for their PE <laughs> ratio or something insane. Oh my God, and pretty much every tech company, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Diamond Peaks. I don't know about Diamond Peaks. I've, I mean, I don't, I don't know what their profits are, but uh, I think they're at fifty. I mean, no, yeah, they're, they're 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 high because they don't really post earnings right now. They're they haven't done that yet, so. Yeah, they're Tesla's, high. A, Tesla's a little over eleven hundred. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Tesla is um, they're interesting. Ooh, okay, I guess like I guess like thirty is probably healthy, right? Four hundred and eighty-six right now for Diamond Peaks. Yeah, I mean, I see where he's coming from in terms of like Microsoft and Amazon and a few other well-known ones. Because um, they still have a very high P.E. ratio with having good earnings still. Um, but a lot of companies have a very high P.E. ratio right now because they had really terrible earnings due to um, extenuating circumstances with something going on right now in the world. So that's why a lot of companies like Tesla, well, not really Tesla actually, but um you know, the airlines and also other travel agencies, cruises, cruises Amazon, have... Amazon too was like, Amazon was like in the 400s for the p and &E. I just looked. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that is pretty concerning. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> what are we going to do, think... boys? Are we going to sell everything or what? Are we waiting it out? I'm just going to wait it out. I have, I have pretty conservative picks now. Um, you know, I'm not... Not really holding anything that has like you know airlines in it at all, just because or or travel related stock or not very much tech either, just because I I want something stable because obviously you know I I am concerned about the about the news so yeah, yeah. and it feels like well I mean we're all pretty confident that another dip is going to happen at some point. Um, I think hoping. it's I think. Everyone probably knows this, and if you don't, you're probably just in denial because um, things are not normal. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, I guess it's. it says the, the short-term calls are even more than 99 to 2007, so like the dot-com bubble up to the Great Recession. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It didn't give too many details on what – was being compared but i guess the biggest four week window in terms of short-term calls 
the amount of money invested in all of these calls was about a hundred billion in both 99 and 07. But in 2020, it was over 500 billion. Wow. So there's definitely a huge bull um, coming out. And it seems like it's most likely the millennials who, you know, probably are on Reddit and are just, Wall Street bets. I don't know. I guess they're just betting away their future. They're, I don't know. Very, uh, yeah, very dangerous. on margins. <laughs> Maybe. It's, not, it's, it's not gambling if you win. It's not, but I mean, I don't know. It's pretty, uh, pretty stupid. Very stupid indeed. I don't, I don't see myself buying anything until at least the end of the year when some of these programs, you know, like the, like we start to see where the forbearance programs are going and the moratoriums. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just, I don't want to jump the gun on anything. It's probably, I agree. Smart. I'm probably going to hold off till the end of the year. I mean, I still have a couple of stocks that I'm pretty deep into right now. I'm not going to mention any names. Diamond Peaks. Diamond Peaks. <laughs> but I think I'm going to maybe sell some when it gets close to the presidential election because we all know there's going to be some type of dip there. I mm-hmm. hope. True. Yeah, Regardless that's of who a, wins. Less than a month away. Yeah, it so is. So I believe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell whatever I have on the dip, rebuy, and then just hold. And then have like a pretty solid amount of cash flow to to see what happens next year. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Close out your positions before the end of the year. Probably, probably pretty smart. But mm-hmm. I'm 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 excited for next week because uh, next week's Friday episode is going to be recorded on the Thursday that Diamond Peak has their shareholder announcement. Oh man, I'm so scared. We'll have we'll have to see what happens. Did you? They've been taking a beating these past two days. Did you vote? Everything has. Yeah, I voted. I voted for the merger, and I voted for all the what's it called? Uh, the board, and I voted for. I voted for a couple other things. Not, I can't remember, but I voted for them. And uh, yeah, we'll see if they uh, announce me officially as the CEO of Lordstown Motors when we do the merger. I think they will. I mean, I I definitely voted for you to become the new CEO. I did too. We we even announced it on Instagram. Uh, Tyler became the new CEO of Diamond Peak Holdings because of his majority share. So uh, go check us out on Instagram at Big Gauchos. I just wanted to point out that JP Morgan has 750,000 shares of Diamond Peak. Okay. And, and Do- Deutsche Bank, I think, has 2 million shares or 700,000, one or the other. Jamie Diamond's never wrong. So I guess I should have jumped in with you guys. Yeah, it's so that, wild that Tyler is still the majority shareholder when those two corporations have all those shares. Well, Tyler has 731,000, so he beat him by 1,000 a, a shares. Yeah. Dang. Uh, well, maybe you could beat him up in uh, shares of Twitter because it uh, looks like their stock might be dropping after what's been happening today. Yeah, what so to that? I didn't even notice. I didn't either. Well, it's because I don't have a Twitter, um, which is for other reasons. I just feel like my life would be worse if I got Twitter. But besides that, um, Twitter apparently went offline for about two hours today. And this is after trading hours. So maybe we'll see them drop a little bit tomorrow during the trading session. But Mm. they went offline for um, two hours between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern time. And as far as I'm aware, there has been no explanation for why this happened but twitter did say that there was no evidence of external hacking like what happened back in july when i guess some teenagers hacked a bunch of people's twitter's account and had bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency sent to them for some kind of weird scam like send me this and i'll send you double that sounds kind of stupid honestly i don't know why anyone would fall for that (laughs) but um i guess that happens dude that's crazy they're actually up in after hours, so I think the market's kind of gotten over it. Dude, Twitter has been insanely like bullish. Like I remember when they were at twenty three dollars. Now they're at almost fifty. Yeah, I don't think Twitter's a buy at all. I think not anymore. No. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there's like been a lot of controversy from yesterday, where I guess 
I guess Twitter like censored some news article and a lot of people got really upset about it. So, and mm. like, I guess there's people in Congress calling to subpoena um, Mr. Dorsey, I believe is his name, the CEO. Yep, he's on the slide right there. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't have one way or the other. I don't really know much about the story. I just know there was like censorship of some kind and people got really upset. I don't I don't even I don't even think Twitter's profitable yet. I don't think so either. I know Facebook is, but I think they're one of the only social media websites that is. Yeah, it's cuz it's cuz they really got their ads down and under control, but I feel like I don't really see any ads on Twitter very often. And if I do, it's like poor integration, so it <laughs> makes sense why they're not profitable. Mm -hmm. And they and they lost a ton of money with Vine closing down way back mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know I, I i don't use either facebook or twitter so i don't really have one say or the other personally <laughs> i don't really care about either of them if they go down i could care less but it's pretty cool i just wish they'd stick around i hope they do yeah yeah me too hmm well I, it seems like we're kind of in disagreement about whether or not Twitter's good, but you know, at least, <laughs> at least we're not the people responsible for the disagreement about the stimulus package because then people would really hate us. Yeah, there's there's been some fighting going on. We've talked about it a little bit, but um, you know, just a refresher: there will probably not be a stimulus release the anytime soon. Probably, I don't even know if there will be one released after the election. Who knows? But um, right now, there's large disagreements between congressional Democrats, the White House, and congressional Republicans. They're all they're all throwing out different numbers, and none of them are budging. So I don't think anything's going to happen. So Democrats, congressional Democrats, are saying they want to have a 2.2 trillion dollar package, and the White House is saying it's only going to support up to 1.8 trillion dollars, and then the congressional Republicans are saying only 500 billion so you know it's, it's a pretty big range of uh numbers they're throwing out here it's it's a lot of it's going to depend on who becomes president um you know and which which package they're going to support um but yeah i even even if there was a change in the president there'd still be so much disagreement like 1.8 trillion and 2.2 trillion are pretty far apart when you realize the points or 100 billion <laughs> a lot yeah. of money so maybe i should have uh, said like 1800 billion versus 2200 billion that sounds a little bit more um legit than you know just point four in the decimal that's like that's like four that's like what four billion four thousand billion four four hundred <laughs> four hundred billion 400 billion yeah yeah it's four 400 billions away and the republicans only want a 500 billion dollar package that's like barely the whole package yeah so i guess the reason behind in, behind this is i'm i'm not i'm not 100 percent certain because um i guess i'm just reading it from the news but i guess what i've been hearing i don't know if you guys have heard this too is like um, in the $2.2 trillion package, they've kind of like added a bunch of like random stuff to the bill. So it isn't like super um, related to the stimulus package. Yeah, I've, I've heard that it's, um, it's a little bit agenda based for yeah. policies, but you know, I just, I just hope they get something going soon, but I, I know they're not going to go negotiate anything until after the election because of what, uh, uh trump was saying the other day about how he how he was going to stop negotiations until after the election so he was supposed to be meeting with pelosi but i don't think that ever happened so yeah so, so we're saying that the money printer is on hold money printer on hold officially wow jay Powell it is, is on hold this crying right now he's scared he's yeah, like i don't I mean, know what to do when the money printer's not working <laughs> no, it's still working. All I did was just put some tape over the uh, the exit of it so they can't. It's like building up right now. <laughs> <laughs> you needed some more time. I mean, they've been negotiating it for like, what, almost six months now? Yeah, since six March. Yeah. Since April. It's, 
that's so too. late. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the like current the political climate. Yeah, I know it really is, and it's getting more and more hostile and tense as the days go on. It feels like. Yeah, it really does. It's uh it's crazy, but you know, I just I wish they'd be a little more generous, like uh like some of the new cell phone providers with the the new iPhone. True. You know, just like just cutting costs for the common good. <laughs> yeah, so um I guess you can get an iPhone twelve pretty cheap now. Um, but there are some caveats to this. So a lot of cell phone providers are trying to attract new customers and they're giving out some pretty insane offers to try and win over the share of people. But we all know that it's not going to work because Verizon's the best. Everything else is trash, at least here That's in um, Arizona. Good point. <laughs> Verizon for life, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Verizon's probably got the best coverage in Arizona. So, um, yeah, I, I know that's not everywhere, but in Arizona, Verizon's definitely top dog, and that's not even a question. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but AT&T is offering $800 if you trade in a old iPhone, as long as it is an iPhone 8 or newer, in order to get the new iPhone 12. When I think the new iPhone 12 is about $1,200. So, you know, it's about two-thirds of the price right there. Mm -hmm. exactly um, well but, it depend, depends on what model you get and also what model you're trading in and this it has to be a pre-order on the new phone on the new uh, iPhone 12 which is going to start tomorrow yeah and you also have to purchase an unlimited plan with AT&T dang so, they're making their money well, off of the subscription that unlimited plan is probably really pricey no it is definitely um but they're definitely going in the hole a lot because those phones are trading in. They're worth maybe like hundred bucks, maybe two hundred bucks at the most. I would say. They were only going to give me two hundred for my phone. I priced it out. I have a eight plus, and wow. yeah, it was it was nowhere near eight hundred. They said two hundred ten bucks. <laughs> so eight hundred for like the eleven or ten. I was going to say yeah, like like the like an, an eleven with like two hundred fifty six gigs, like a. An 11 Max, Pro Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you went out and tried it? Yeah, well, I tried filling it out on the website. They're like, what phone do you have? I said 8 Plus, and they're like, all right, you get $210. <laughs> At for AT&T? Uh, for Verizon. Oh, but Verizon is a little bit different. So they, they have the $800 credit. It's the same thing as the AT&T, but it's only the $800 credit is only for... New, new customers. customers okay that makes sense yeah not for existing my phone my phone's oh. so destroyed anyway i probably wouldn't get 800 bucks i think they would i have the seven tires mm, out of luck i'm out of luck you're, you're close big t <laughs> yep tire was caught in the hallway but and then we have t-mobile here and they're saying they're only offering 500 dollars. so probably the worst one in arizona and they're offering the um the worst amount Oh, well, actually, I should say they're offering $850 if you buy a plan. So, so it's, I, it's actually a better offer than Verizon. <laughs> Probably, yeah. All right, I'm going to be honest with you guys. So we, I've heard a lot about the new iPhone 12. They have like 10 different models now. But it really isn't any different compared to like the 11. All it is is 5G and like maybe a little bit of a better processor with a slightly better camera. Mm -hmm. Like I don't yeah. see, I don't see with a value or that extra value that differentiates themselves from any other, the, any of the previous models. You're saying the 12? Yeah. It's cause it's, it's their first iPhone with 5G and it's got mm -hmm. the upgraded chip and it also has, um, it also has a LiDAR technology so it can like map out a room and do like 3d try-ons of clothes and like the phone and stuff like you can you can do like 3d like interactive stuff on your phone at home and i think yeah but yeah the camera's also better but that's pretty much it yeah i mean i guess part personally is just 5G. impressive yeah i guess so because just, just think about the difference between 3g and 4 and lte it's massive yeah, I can I can only imagine what the twelve would be, but I can't justify paying that much money for a phone. Like, no, that I'll, is true. I'll just, 
I'll just wait until like whatever phone comes out next year and then like 12 is cheap. Exactly. That's, that's the way to do it. But yeah, I mean, who knows with 5G, you may be trying to open up YouTube. You open up Safari and YouTube's already open. It's that fast. <laughs> it just reads your mind. <laughs> it's like a chip implanted in you. Yeah, it's like a neural link. You just think about it and it's opened. Ooh, smart man, smart man. 6G. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I'm thinking of 6G. The phone just gets faster by itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to buy a new phone. If anything, I'm going to buy a pre-owned phone for a cheaper price that's basically new. I would do that too. I was looking at the it's 11. It's pretty cheap. Honestly, whatever. Like, I bought my seven brand new for like 250 bucks. So I could probably get like a new. Do they have an iPhone 9? It was the. Mm -hmm. It it was the 8 Plus. It was the 8 Plus, then the XE and the SE, and then it was uh, uh, the X. Yeah, it was the X, and then it was um, 11. And now we're on 12. Did they forget how to count or something? Where to have it a nine? <laughs> they just skipped it. I don't know. Yeah. I think I have the X. I'm not sure. But I know it doesn't oh. have the home button, so. I yeah, like the home button. I'm not going to lie. Does the new one have the home button or no? No. The oh. the eight was the last one to have it. That's the one I have. No, I'll tell you, Tyler. I thought it would be weird, too. It was weird for maybe two days, but I don't really miss the home button at all now. Wow. I just like the, the thumbprint. Yeah, the I face recognition is pretty good, I'll be honest. Because the thumbprint for me, I don't know why, but a lot of the times I would do, I would set the thumbprint up, and then like three weeks later, it wouldn't recognize my thumb anymore. So I would have to redo it. But the facial recognition is perfect. I've never had to redo the facial recognition. Wow. I don't know I why. See. Maybe it was my phone, but I don't know. I can't say the so same. <laughs> my fingers are weird. I just, I guess my fingerprint changes every couple of weeks. Did you burn your finger, fingertips? It, no, he's just, he's just a lizard person. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. I'm a lizard person. Yeah, probably Apple's going to make a lot of money off of this. And uh, we'll see what they do with the 13, if they even call it the 13. It's I'm probably going to skip a number of games they can't count. It's about yeah. time for them I mean, to skip. Are, what are they going to do next? Uh, for four cameras? <laughs> just Maybe. like it's just like a row of like five cameras all the way across the phone. <laughs> I'd be down. Yeah, I can't imagine what what's next for Apple. To be honest, I feel like they're running out of ideas. Yeah, I do too. But. Maybe with all the money they make on the new phone, they could pay some people's utility bills in the Rust Belt and up north. Yeah. So, I don't know you guys, but I never knew this. And I know we didn't talk about it, but there was a moratorium on shutting off utility bills that went out when the um, foreclosure moratorium came out back, you know, when was that? Probably March then, huh? Or April? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And, um, yeah, they're not shutting off utilities for these people because, you know, if you're living up north, you um, kind of a uh, – kind of um, – what am I trying to say? Freezing. You're freezing. And yeah. And you, you kind of you need the heat. I mean, we're, we're kind of lucky down here. I mean, obviously, you still have to pay for air conditioning. Otherwise, you're going to overheat. But um, – yeah, I don't I don't really know what it's like to have to shovel like five feet of snow outside. So True. Lived in yeah. the desert my whole life snow. like the boys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would definitely be terrible if you didn't have air conditioning in the summertime, but I think you could survive. Um but <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I think you could. I think it would be I'd terrible. But you can do it. Yeah. Um, but if you're up north where it gets you know negative 10 degrees you need the heat otherwise you're gonna freeze to death that's just like a fact mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's definitely a good thing that um they did it but the moratorium expired yesterday in a lot of these states and you know what's going on with government probably 
they won't try to fix it. So it's up to the states, I guess, or maybe the CDC will come out again and do something. I don't know. But um, right now, these people are not protected, which is kind of scary. It's probably going to end up being Red Cross at this point because it seems like an emergency disaster situation for people that can't afford heat. I mean, it's it's super sad. That's like that's like one of the huge consequences of you know just the government failing to you know work with each other and negotiate. You know, both sides are super stubborn. So I don't want to get into that, but <laughs> yeah. And it's not just heat, you know, like a lot of people are working from home now and, you know, Wi-Fi is more important than it's ever That's been. True. And That's also true. electricity, water, um, sewage, all very important uh, things that people really cannot live without. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very true. Yeah. It's, it's little things you don't think about. And also like, what if, what if stores are relying on the utility moratorium? You know, they, they can't stay open and, you know, feed everybody and give people their jobs. That is true. You know, it's a lot of pretty scary stuff going on right now. However, um, there's a caveat. Uh, I learned this just now, but there is a uh, telephone number you can call. It is one eight six 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 seven four six three two seven. And this is a referral hotline that can put callers who are vulnerable from having their utilities shut off with local nonprofits near their home state or home city or whatever. And this is to help them, or these nonprofits will help pay utility bills, supposedly. So, you know, if you're one of those people, definitely check this out because that would be horrible. Yeah, it would, that would really be awful. I don't... I don't understand why the utility companies can't help out a little bit more, honestly. Like, I, I think they can afford it. <laughs> most, most utility companies in certain states, they, they kind of have the monopoly on a certain kind of power, at least, especially in Arizona. There's only, like, you know, two two companies for each utility. Yeah. But, and even less, depending which city you live in. So, it's it's not like they're going to lose all their customers. I mean, people don't have any other option except to sign up with them when, you know, everything gets better. But, you know, I think in the meantime, they should be more understanding. Yeah, but I mean, Austin, we're in a, we're in a place where money is everything. So no money, no power. No money, no food. You know how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean... If I, was, if I was in charge of the power company, I wouldn't want people to die because I because I needed a forty million dollar salary. <laughs> Dude, I mean, think about it though. Like companies wouldn't want to show a negative that'll hurt their stock, and then they'll go down. And I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad. It's very sad. Yeah, the numbers are more important than people. There's a couple of things you don't mess with. Uh, you know, utility, food, shelter, those are all things you do not mess with because people will get really upset and um, I don't know what they'll do. You know, if you push them in that situation, they might do whatever. I know. Truest. Well, let's hope everything ends up okay. But um, in the meantime, we should check out some big winners, big losers, and some sleepers. Hit yes, that sir. Hit that ad. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, well, on a little bit more positive and interesting note, uh, we got Rolls Royce up 8.6% today as Big Gaucho winner in first place. Wow. Yeah. They were, I swear they were in big losers. They go back and forth pretty regularly. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I know they're a luxury car, but I think their cars look trash. I don't like them either, and I, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay half a million for a car that Volkswagen makes. <laughs> All right, boys, hear me out. This is my only argument for this. Big people can actually fit in these cars comfortably. <laughs> At what cost, <laughs> dude? I don't. I mean, they're really nice interior. Like, I personally would get one because I can actually fit in one. Man, like a lot true. of the sports models and like sports cars like ferraris lamborghinis and all that i can't fit in those 
Yeah, well, that's like not really a sports car, is it? It's more of a luxury car. That's what luxury I meant, luxury car. car. Luxury car. Can you fit uh, in a like, Mustang? I mean, uh, I don't know. I've never been in one, to be honest. Mm. I can't fit in a Camaro. Oh, that's about the same mm. size. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I didn't think of that. Yeah, Tyler. Tyler's six foot six for anybody that's tuning in that is on audio or YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's kind of hard to judge through the uh, the video recording, but yeah, Tyler is six foot six. I am four foot three, and Austin is five foot two. Five two. <laughs> <laughs> yep, same time. <laughs> so yeah, like that's that's why a lot of NBA players get Rolls Royces. They fit in there. <laughs> I guess that makes that. sense. Yeah, they're all like seven feet tall. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you think you think they could fit on a razor scooter? <laughs> oh no, this is not a razor scooter. No sir. Yeah. yeah, it's just I'm just kidding. You guys got pranked. Gosh. I wish it was. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know if they have an actual stock. I thought it was at first, but go ahead, Dave. What's this one? Razor Incorporated is up seven point six nine percent, and they're kind of like a gaming gear company so they make like uh light up mouses the laptops headsets, the laptops yeah and keyboards they're Isn't like the one for, you have? for the gamer boys um no i do not have that i don't think must be thinking kevin just bought else. a mouse from razor i believe yeah they make really cool mouses um i don't even know what my mouse is from uh Rosewell, I guess. I don't know. It's not Razor, but Razor has some pretty cool stuff. I like, honestly, their uh, their light up electronics are really cool. Especially if you got a full setup, like where your keyboard lights up, your mouse lights up, and the computer itself lights up. The um, um, what am I trying to say? The if you have a desktop, you have the computer light up. That looks really pretty, pretty sleek. Not gonna lie. Top uh, notch. I'm with it. We'll have to we'll have to invest in that just for the just for the mice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Razor, if you're listening to us, please send us a full rig full <laughs> of uh, mouses, computers, laptops that glow computer. and basically make everything pretty for the big gauchos, and we'll we'll shout you out. Please sponsor us. That'd be really you, cool. Use promo code Big Gauchos at checkout for three uh, percent off your first order. Yeah, and a big industry that we haven't really ever talked about that's getting more and more traction is esports you know like um oh, yeah yeah they're they're getting pretty big and i don't think they're getting the respect they uh deserve but you know they could be pretty big in the future i know it's not really it's still kind of developing but you know just give it like 10 20 years maybe it'll be on espn call of duty you think so yeah Maybe not Call of Duty because I think Call of Duty is uh, probably going to be done by then. But other video <laughs> games, you know. I, mean, I don't think Call of Duty is ever going to die. Yeah, they did have that big tournament. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. But I know, I don't think it's getting as big in America as it is in other countries. I know it's getting bigger in Europe and especially China and South Korea. South Korea especially. Um, but America still is not quite there yet but i think i think we'll get there eventually especially with uh people being inside a lot more you know playing video games playing Call oh, yeah. of Duty, fortnite yeah I'm, um, I'm sure i'm sure that's why they're going up even more right now mm-hmm. mm, but they're gonna have to find somewhere to store all that data maybe they can do it in the cloud with fastly or maybe not Ooh. if they're bankrupt by then <laughs> this is, I swear they've been on the biggest losers like back to back. They were down like twenty percent the other day. Yeah, they're I don't know what they're doing, but they're down twenty seven percent today. And uh, you know, just another day at the office at Fastly. <laughs> we must do this every day. Jesus, true. Yeah, I I would never invest in cloud storage. I think I, there's too way saturated. It's, yeah, way too saturated and way too overpriced. Dang, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was not looking good. Mm-hmm. But, Let's see how Snowflake's doing. They're like they $2. are two forty. They're about even. I really don't. Yeah, I think the, the market's still waiting, probably. 
but I think it's going to drop. I, I, I can't imagine self like being super successful. Yeah. It was just, it was just the hype early on at the beginning for sure. Mm-hmm. But um, What's number two? Dude, I wish, <laughs> I wish somebody would kill the hype. I can't even say this one. I wish somebody would kill the hype on this one. Uh, <laughs> got a, oh, oh God, I'm going to throw up. Lemonade insurance is down 8.22%. Ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, I hate this company, dude. That's such a stupid name. Are you going to buy some lemonade? We might have to just for the meme, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you bought Hertz, you might as well buy lemonade. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to well. lie, though. Lemonade has been going up in September. They were at around forty, forty nine dollars, fifty bucks. Now they're at sixty three, so they are trending up. Ooh, that's what's up, Gaucho. Bless you. But 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 when they first went public back in July, they were trading at around eighty dollars, and then they dropped mm. to forty eight. Now they're at sixty three, so about in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, so they gotta make that. <laughs> oh man, I'm back up. <laughs> allergies, bro. I can't. Allergies just from lemonade. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I feel he's, that he's he's smelling BS and he's allergic to it. Uh-huh. So Tyler is lemonade to buy. I it, <laughs> it is, uh, <laughs> no, not a buy. It's a sell and hope it dies. Oh my God. Unless they sponsor this, unless they sponsor this episode <laughs> or our big gauchos, and we are all for lemonade, and we hope that you guys get some lemonade too. But until that day happens, no, sell. Yeah, true. Yeah, we're we're not we're not sponsored, so just sell all your lemonade and put it into Hertz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a better chance of making money. Yeah, or you uh, can don't uh, do that either. You can sell your lemonade and buy a lemonade stand. Seriously, Ooh. or sell your lemonade and buy Diamond Peak Holdings. Merger next week. Merger next Brilliant. week. Even better, sell your lemonade and buy some big sleepers of the day. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. sleep. Boom. What do we got, boys? Uh, this one's my personal favorite. Uh, we got the Cracker Barrel <laughs> at number one. Ooh. Um, roadside travel is booming just because uh, a lot of people are scared to fly. And so. Um, if you'll remember, Cracker Barrel is mainly located along freeways and interstates. So it's good if you're on the move with the family. You know, it's pretty nostalgic. So I think they have a lot of room to grow. And uh, they're also... you never been to Cracker Barrel? No, I thought we talked about this before. Yeah, oh, we I did. Thought, I, thought, I thought you hadn't been to um, Cheesecake Factory. That too. I haven't been there either. Bro, we're gonna have to hit. We're gonna have to hit them all in one day. We should. We'll we'll go the next time we go to Tucson to visit Dave. We'll go to Cracker Barrel. It's on the way. Hell yeah! They have one on the way on I ten. Uh yeah, it's near Casa Grande. Huh? I've never seen it. At least I thought there was. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm losing it. Delusion A W. A and W. Yeah, that's a move yeah. too. But yeah, I think I think it'll come back as a. More highway travel resumes for sure. Yeah. And I th- the trucking is still a big industry too. So there's a lot of people that, you know, do transportation related jobs for a living. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they, they need they need a good home cooked meal. Yeah. And I don't think that'll ever change because even if you have autonomous trucks, you know, they might need a little, little pick me up, you know, every now and then. So they may hit up Cracker Barrel. You know, get that uh, fried chicken and have the the workers just put it in the diesel tank or whatever. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'd be hitting up Cracker Barrel for sure. Uh, there, There is one in Casa Grande. It's at Florence Boulevard and I-10. So uh, right right by that Harkins and the that whole shopping center there. Oh. The, um... I found it. <laughs> what is that called? Promenade. Yeah, the promenade, the promenade, the promenade. promenade. Hails from hails from Paris. I didn't know there's a Cracker Barrel over there. Interesting. I just always see the billboards for it when I'm driving there, so that's how I knew. <laughs> I feel that. What's number two? 
Ooh, Pearson Learning Company, uh, everybody's most hated company from school. Um, they make a lot of good textbooks. It's a British-based company. Didn't know that until today. But with with schools reopening and people still going to school online, I, I think it's a pretty good long-term investment. It's a pretty good bit. Mm, I know I have some textbooks from them. I use them for services. I did too, I yeah. Them. Well, they have online textbooks now. Even even if you do hate them, like your school still uses them is the problem. So they they force their customers to use their products. That is yeah, true. I think this is actually a great sleeper. You want to know why? Why is that? Online. Like you said, everybody also isn't don't doesn't Pearson also do like uh homework attached to it? So you have to buy mm-hmm. the book to access the homework. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They they force you exactly. to be a customer. <laughs> yeah, it's a great sleeper actually because more people are going towards the online department, and it saves money for Pearson as well. So they don't have to actually print books; it's all digital. True. Mm-hmm. That's you know, for the future, already writing it. Yep. For any uh, exactly. young college students out there, if your professor makes you buy a Pearson subscription to do homework, just send them a nasty email calling them lazy because they are lazy. <laughs> if they don't make their own homework and they rely on a third company, third party company to make their homework, they're not even really teaching you anything. They're just kind of like making you take the Pearson course. So I don't and know. That's just my thought. Job. <laughs> the only no, courses either. I've ever used that use Pearson homeworks were like the introductory classes, AKA the professors who are, um, yeah, dot, dot, dot. Oh my gosh. Garbage. Yeah, yeah, a, a zero star on rate, on rate my professor. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, just a quick correction before we do the final sleeper. Uh, the Pearson stock is PSO. There's a typo. It's a seven dollars and three cents today at close, Ooh. and their P and E is only fifteen point eight. So it's actually a very, it's actually a very healthy company. Yeah, so make sure you buy it today because by the time this episode comes out, their PE will probably be close to 500 just because of the uh, amount of population that we have. So definitely buy it. That's true. All 50 people that listen to this one. (laughs) But um, all you that are listening, make sure you pick up some Redfin as well. Um, They got a lot of valuable real estate data and the market is still super hot. Hot, hot fire. Super hot, super hot. Super hot fire. Fire. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> I, do. I love that video. <laughs> but I am a podcaster, and uh, you guys are podcasters too, and we all use Anchor to make these shows possible. Anchor, 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 Anchor. Anchor, Anchor, Anchor. anchor, anchor. Let's hit that ad. Yo, hit that ad. Hit that ad. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is <laughs> excited for the anchor ad. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> uh, we have no new additions to report today for the bankruptcy boneyard. Uh, just waiting to make it to page number two, but um, until that happens, uh, we'll have to go to the Dow Jones game. Um, I. I humbly took the dub today and destroyed everybody. And uh, as my next move, I will call a little bit of a dip, uh, 28222.22. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I like it. Dave, you want to go or do you want me to go? Hey, what did you say, Austin? 28222.22. Uh, so just twos. Do you want to, you want to sandwich him? Just twos. No, I'm going to go, you know, I think it's going to keep going up. So I'm going to go 28.565. Okay. Not a bad. I was like a 100 point jump almost. I was thinking around 28.6, but since you got close to my number, I'll do 28.701. Oh, Point eighty-eight. Point eighty-eight. Yes. <laughs> Those decimals count. <laughs> they they do. They did that one time. It was yeah. down to the wire. 
and down. Yeah, I got to get back up. I'm back in last place. This is unacceptable. Yeah, you got to start smoking canal on this on this game. Uh, we do not have a number submission from him yet. We do not, but currently the score is David with 37, Austin has 31, Canal is 27, and Tyler is the egg at 20. Wait, I said Canal. Canal is 28. Austin, oh wait, I'm messing all this up. Canal is 28, and Tyler is 27. <laughs> yes, That's right. That is right, sir. Um, well, I think it's anybody's game tomorrow. Actually, the market's so volatile, but. Uh, Guess you guys are just gonna have to come back and see and get ready for the exciting Diamond Peak merger announcement next week. It's gonna be a crazy week of episodes, but we want to thank everyone for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. Leave us a voice message on anchor.fm slash gauchos or biggauchos.com if you want to send an investing tip. We could play it on the show. Tyler, that disclaimer. All right, big gauchos. Quick disclaimer because we love disclaimers. Everything said on this podcast is from our experiences, which are our opinions. And uh, we are not licensed brokers. So please, 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 before you put your money into anything, anything, please do your research and make sure you are investing safely because we are not liable for any lost gains, but we're all directly liable for all major gains because we love to make money. And with that being said, please like and subscribe. We love the support. We grow every day because of y'all. And Dave, Dave, David, please let the viewers know our amazing Instagram. Yeah, so the Instagram is at Big Gauchos, and go check it out. We post some great content. Um, you know, give us some uh, some feedback. See if you uh, if you like some of our clips, some of our pictures. We post some great stuff. So please like, follow, and you will not regret it. You will never live to regret it. And also, uh, after you're done checking us out on YouTube and on Instagram. Make sure you check us out on all of our streaming services. Make sure you share that link with a friend. Uh, We are available everywhere podcasts are, including Apple, Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Radio Public, Overcast, or add us to your own RSS feed application. And make sure, especially if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you leave us a rating one to five stars. We do not accept anything less than four and a half stars. Leave us a good or bad review. We don't really care anymore. Um, And share it with a friend. And uh, yes, sir. to add boys, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if Diamond Peaks doesn't pull through for me tomorrow, I'm gonna be a very sad man, like, I'll lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> I Not really hope at all, yeah. You know, Tyler invested his entire life savings into it, so you know, hopefully, it pulls out for him because we don't want Tyler having to, uh, you know, be uh, shut off from utilities, that'd be terrible. Yep, I, I totally agree. I'm hoping Diamond Peaks pulls through for the boys, but uh, come back next week and find out. Peace.